Thought Cops, the only podcast for every week we talk about what's outraging the internet, and then we let you be the judge, we let you be the jury, we let you be the executioner, too, in the court of public opinion. Coming to you live from Neo Chicago, I'm Officer Kevin, and with me is Officer Grant. Kevin, what do you get when you cross an owl with a bungee cord? I don't know. What? My ass. You know, what is that, from TourettesGuy.com? No, uh, Kung Pao went to the fist. Okay. Uh, thank you for sharing that joke. <laughs> didn't make any sense. Uh, <laughs> thank you to our guest from last week, uh, our good friend Nico. Thanks for coming on. And, uh, oh, I wonder who that might have been. Oh, that's just our good friend, uh, Brett Mercer, coming to us from uh, Neo of Detroit. What's up, Brett? What's up, gang? What's up, Thought Cops and Thought Cop Nation? What's up, everyone in the Discord and everyone uh, in my apartment building who can hear me talking? Everybody at home, everybody listening yeah. in the car, on the train. We don't really give a shit. We love you. No, <laughs> yeah. ma- no matter what creed you are. Yeah. I'm going to stop myself right there. Early creed or, or later creed? <laughs> the uh, uh, sort of middle creed. Higher mm. creed. Mm. Good era. Good era. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, Brett... Gotta reiterate this, you got your own podcast, it's called Big Time Garbage, give us a quick rundown. Guilty as charged. Look, it's just me and my friends hanging out, you know, we're talking shit, we're talking the zeitgeist, we're talking stand-up in Detroit, we're talking, you know, we, we, we roast each other, we have a good time. It's just, oh, whoa, it's, not, not too hard, I hope. Yeah, well, look, uh, it's, 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 not what, it's not what you would call a quote-unquote safe space, okay? <laughs> Somebody had to say it. Yeah. Check Mark Libs. Yeah, it's it's kind of like tough crowd for people who like a shittier version of tough crowd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I've check been, it out. Uh, uh, we're on the uh, we're on the internet. You can find it. You just Google it. You can find it. Yeah, Google dot com. You can find Brett there. Yeah, Google dot com. Uh, duck duck go. Duck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for those uh, of you who uh, you know who, who like to keep a low profile on the net. Brett, are you guys sponsored on Yahoo dot com search engine? You know what? I I don't think we're sponsored. I think we severed ties with them, but I think we still oh. show up in the uh, in the results. We Actually, offered them a uh, a sponsorship deal where we would plug Yahoo Williams on every single episode, but they said uh, <laughs> they said uh, please do not respond to this email. We, <laughs> so that's unfortunate, should, really. Bryce, should we uh, should we cut this or can we can we keep this? Yeah, can we? Okay. No, I'm not I'm not afraid to put them on blast. I mean, <laughs> look. Okay, Google <laughs> This week, do us a favor. Keep this in. We're going live, baby. Yeah. Uh, Yahoo be damned. That's right. We're on Team Brett. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's uh, Team Brett or Team Yahoo.com. Let us know what you think. Uh, leave us a voicemail, 312-788-7361. Uh, maybe hashtag. We get, let's, get a, let's go viral. Yeah. How about fuck that? Yahoo. <laughs> hashtag fuck Yahoo. Uh, hashtag Team Brett. Grant, you got anything else you want to add? Uh, no, follow, follow Brett on, uh, on Twitter. His, uh, his tweets and his, uh, Facebook posts have been incredibly entertaining every okay. time I scroll through and I see one of them. Follow Brett and all of his family members on Facebook. <laughs> add him as friend. You got to go to the profile, add friend. He will have to confirm the friend request. That's the thing. But once you're in, baby, oh, yeah. you're in for a treat. Yeah, uh, that's t- good shit. Tell him the precinct sent you. Yes. You get a free discount. Uh, yeah. double the posting yeah, yeah yeah look if i get 10 friend requests on facebook and three new twitter followers guess what i'm committing to posting three four times a day okay <laughs> you heard it here first fuck yahoo yeah couldn't agree more mm, mm. 
Uh, let's move on, though. We, uh, Grant, I understand that we have a new T-shirt. Is that right? So, you know my affinity for, uh, like, really bad, really specific jokes <clears throat> that not a lot of people get? <clears throat> yeah. All right. So, I made... <laughs> I made a I made a Bernie Sanders themed t-shirt. Okay. And it's uh but Bernie Sanders uh, I'll put a link up in the uh on the website. Bernie Sanders is dressed up as uh Checkmate from uh Ultimate Muscle. Uh do you guys remember the TV show Ultimate Muscle <laughs> in the early 2000s yeah. on Fox Box mm-hmm. in the morning? Mhm. Brett, did you ever watch Ultimate Muscle? I can't say that I have. I've never seen Ultimate Muscle. So, it's it's an anime, and even by anime standards, most really most bad. fans don't know what the fuck this is. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm gonna Google it. It's really it's really oh, it's uh, really bad. Nick Nick uh, Nico is calling you out in the chat here. She says you mean Kinikuman, you fucking gaijin. And guess what? She's right. Fucking nerds. It's called Kinikuman. Fucking nerds. We're not selling. I guess we are selling. <laughs> yeah. I guess I put my name on this. Okay, I endorse it. Uh, right. Check it out, Thought Cops, uh, Teespring Wait, Thought Cops. But let me, let me finish the, the explanation here. So Please. it's uh, he, Bernie Sanders is dressed up as the character Checkmate. Um, and as any ultimate muscle head knows, uh, <laughs> Checkmate could not feel pain. Um, he, he trained pain out of his system. So, you know, uh, Kid Muscle could not, uh, could not get him. He, he, he had to sort of break him. And uh, the reason why checkmate couldn't feel pain is because uh when he was younger he was sort of uh trained and conditioned himself um and one of the ways he he one of the ways he got pain out of his system is he would repeat this mantra to himself he would say feel the burn burn the feeling and he'd be doing a thousand two thousand ten thousand sit-ups and he'd just keep saying feel the burn burn the feeling until he didn't feel anything anymore so it's uh, Bernie Sanders, and uh, it says feel the burn, but it's spelled B-E-R-N. So if you'd like to uh, buy this t-shirt of a highly specific reference of an anime show that nobody watched, um, then uh, yeah, visit, visit our Teespring store. We also got other shirts. We do have other shirts. If this one is too specific, go ahead and buy another one. Or buy this one. I, I dare you to buy this one. Oh, feel the burn. I see what's going on there. Yeah, you get it? Burn and burn sound sound similar, right? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's sort of um, what do you call that? Play on words. A, yeah, <laughs> if 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 you will. So I'm I, coming in hot off the press. I'm, I'm I I searched this on Google.com, one of my favorite search engines, and it says that 96 <laughs> percent of uh, Google users liked this TV show, and that's Google users. So you know that's a pretty good show. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. kind of hard to believe. That's a huge That's fan fun. base. Google mm-hmm. fans are some of the most dedicated fans in the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You mention anything other than Google and somebody like Google it. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's a fucking verb. <laughs> Look, they've they've cornered the market. You're never you're never going to Yahoo Images, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to reiterate <clears throat> uh fuck Yahoo, team fuck Yahoo, uh <laughs> team go Brett, whatever the hell uh we said earlier. Look, honestly, and I can't stress this enough, thank you. Brent, thank you, you have for being on my side on this. <laughs> and I want, to, I want to speak for both me and Grant here for a second and say that you have, no matter what you do in life, no matter what crimes you may commit, atrocities you may commit, we <laughs> have your back no matter what that you decide to commit. Hell, we got hell you. yeah. Hell, hell yeah. That, that feels good. You know, we got to support each other. Us, us podcasters... <laughs> Us podcasters out here, look, it's important that we, we, we get each other's back. And, and if you need me to take down any uh, major uh, dot-com bubble era corporations, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, you want, if you want to go after pets.com, like locked and loaded, baby, let's do this. Well, we'll, we'll keep that in mind, my friend. Uh, yeah. Well, let's move on here to uh, two minutes of hate, we'll blanket punish, uh, things that annoy us, things that irritate us, things that get under our skin, these general trends or things online. Things that are genuinely terrible. Exactly. So I'll begin. Two words. Alien comics. Two more words. Nathan Pyle. Nathan Pyle is shit, am I right? Oh! <laughs> uh, I, you may or may... I know this is sort of a vague reference, but I'm willing to bet that some of you have maybe seen these shared either on Facebook... Or at the water cooler at work. Uh, it's these alien comics. 
where it's we'll we'll post a link in the episode description so you're not going here in the dark. Uh, it's these aliens. It's these blue. A, a lot of times, I'm looking at a bunch of these right now on a tiny screen. Uh, a lot of the backgrounds are pink colored. The aliens are blue colored. That's ringing a bell, and they're usually four panels long. And the aliens are doing things. This is a good one. Okay, I'm going to describe. It's, it's this. like a deconstruction of reality. It's a reductionist deconstruction of reality. So this one, it's two aliens uh, in frame number one. Uh, alien number one is handing alien number two a present, a gift wrap present. Is now you possess mm. this. Oh. And okay. alien two is going so unnecessary. And just to give you a uh, visual cue, <laughs> oh, that's, that's what you think an alien sounds like. <laughs> Racist, uh, you know. Racist, <clears throat> sir. It's these aliens, and uh, <laughs> so they're dra- kind of drawn like Adventure Time or like the Oatmeal kind of like they're simple like line work. Yeah. It's it's like the Oatmeal. I mean, this is the kind of thing you think is funny if you've never experienced pain <laughs> or so. <laughs> <laughs> or suffering in your life you've yeah. never this is the kind of thing you think is funny if you've never lost uh, a family member <laughs> <laughs> this is this is what someone cracks up to you know like <laughs> like 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 their idea of a joke is like <laughs> the words are different so these aliens he's like opening the box he says i want to observe concealment destruction now destroy the concealment but it's so beautiful. Destroy. Destroy. Now I want to observe. Okay. So he's opening a birthday present and there he's like, whoa. Yeah, that didn't need four fucking panels. Yeah, a little, a little wordy for how simplistic it is. Anyway. Yeah, and that, that's the point. I guess people find these like cutesy or funny or whatever. And like we, we've been ragging on these for I think like a week or so now in the Discord, which if you're not in the Discord, you got to get in the Discord. But uh there, there's this one where this guy, this alien's at the dentist, and the dentist goes, I'm here to scrape your mouth stones. What? Whoa. Have you been forcing string? I've never heard anybody talk like this. This is, this is alien to me. Uh, I think I just got the, I think I just got it. Ooh, oh, this is one of those go homers, you know? Takes yeah. a little bit to. And these yeah. are consistently voted to the top of, like, r slash funny on Reddit. By the guy that makes the comics. Well, Brett, uh, you're a comedian. Do you think? <laughs> do you think that R slash joke funny man? R slash funny. That's kind of where like all the good stuff is at. Yeah, for sure. Like if I'm ever like running dry on like writing material, <laughs> I'll just fire up Reddit.com, go to R slash funny, and just go to the top, and then just s- slightly reword a meme. You and, pretty much uh, steal anything on here. And we love it. You know, they, like the whole crowds love it. So like, here's just something I've been workshopping lately. Let's go to top of the past month. All right. So like my fiance thinks I can only embarrass him once a month, but now I have obtained this video. Happy Valentine's Day. So that's just a joke I'm working on. Um, <laughs> Got her. And, oh, that's, you know, that's just R slash funny. Like R slash funny is a, it's, it's a good metric for like what, like my, like what my, grandparents will find funny like in maybe three months so like it'll, let's, it'll let's, make the rounds to facebook yeah so let's say you're going home for thanksgiving or you're going home for a holiday you know prepare three months ahead scroll to the top of r slash funny and just just collect a bunch of jokes you'll be a hit hey why why are we uh exchanging presents have you ever thought about that uh it's like we're you know concealing destruction <laughs> have you thought about that folks <laughs> you know what i mean now I've found myself in in situations where I've been given a gift, and someone says, "Here, I got you this gift," and I'd say, "Oh, you didn't have to." Uh, but thinking about that interaction, that conversation, breaking it down. Let's break down the words. You know, I got you this gift. I, so another way to think about that. Let's say if you're like from outer space, for example. <laughs> okay. Oh, all right. I'm on board. The point is, you would pronounce that, or you would say things a little bit differently. Just a little different. You know so we're I mean? laughing. We're laughing at immigrants. Is that the joke here? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. It's like people who don't understand our language and attempt to create our like our syntax and, and the way that we use verbs and nouns and how they conjugate. And I don't know. And trust me, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But <laughs> when you see someone get it wrong, it's like they're different. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're fucking different like, things. It's the best. Here's here's another one. This this alien guy's doing push ups here and uh 
this this other alien comes up to him and he's like, are you in pain? And he's like, I push myself up to let myself down. I'm up to 50 letdowns a day. And it's funny to think that he means push-ups, but if you really think about it, he it's it's both push-ups and letdowns. You know, if you think about it, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of like, that, like Mitch, that Mitch Hedberg joke. They you know, they call a fly a fly, but when they call it a land, that's what it does half the time. It's looking at things a little bit differently. It, it really is. It's, there's I, a whole other world of perception out there that we're just not acclimated to. I got a punishment. Yeah, this guy has to do politics. <laughs> sap all the sap all the joy from him. Politics only from yeah. now on. Tackle the fucking presidential race, twenty twenty. None of this yeah. cutesy bullshit. You know that that's gonna happen anyway, right? I just wanted to. How, how many like uh, weird cartoonists have just started making overtly like racist cartoons? This and shit guy like could that. be the next freaking Scott Adams. Or the Damn, or dude. I'm thinking in the next uh, what's what's that one guy that labels Earth all his Jim or, or no uh, <laughs> uh, Ben Garrison Ben Garrison yeah oh fucking a modern that, day Michael freaking Angelo <laughs> a team up for the century anyway uh, Brett what is your two minutes of hate all right now I I I, I can't imagine you guys haven't covered this on the show yet but. The, all right, so we're, we're talking meme formats, right? We're talking, we're talking post formats. We're talking the uh, somebody and then colon and then they don't say anything, and then unprompted, the poster, the op, if you will, will say something like, "This is what I wanted to say." Unprompted. Uh huh. We, we're familiar with this. Uh, with this. Yeah. Uh, oh, this we format? love it here. We we oh. think it's the we think it's the best. <laughs> Kevin Kevin got so angry at your proposition that he just hit the microphone with an axe handle. <laughs> I have been holding one the entire episode just for a little visual for the listeners out there. Um, so this so is just, what it's like at Thought Cops HQ. <laughs> at the uh, that's what it's like downtown. <laughs> yeah, quote downtown yeah. unquote. Because of the cop thing, but all right. So, <laughs> no. I, so basically, what you're saying is what happened was uh, somebody, and then they didn't say anything, and then Kevin hits mic stand. That's, oh, my <laughs> That's brilliant, man. It's like no. I got all these things to say, and people just I, I'm so passionate about these things, and then somebody just like, uh, and then I just blurt it out. You know, <laughs> I can't, it's like I can't, uh, I can't I stop myself. One. I got I got a good one. Okay, all right, uh, I'm listening. Somebody colon. Empty uh, space. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, already laughing. <laughs> all right. All right. Get ready. Get ready. Grant colon uh-huh. lifting advice. <laughs> do I do it that that often? Well, when people ask, well, I guess, oh, hold on, I guess I'd have to ask yeah. you. Well, we do have a lifting channel in yeah, our Discord. I, I fucked it up. They should. There's no. <laughs> hey, Grant. I got a they, question. They ask you first. Yeah. I, I have a question about lifting. Yeah. Go ahead. Why, shoot. Don't, the, why don't they call it putting heavy stuff down? <laughs> You should use this at the uh, at the gym next time. Uh, they're called uh, they're called letdowns. They're called the eccentric portion. <laughs> this sounds funny. All right. So uh, what I love about this is that <laughs> this meme format is that is that it's usually expressed by the you know through a social media post, which is inherently an unprompted proclamation into the world. Yeah. yeah. So the whole part where like no one said anything, like that's. I mean, that's just reality. You might as well start the post with like, I'm starting to type in. <laughs> unless, but I was thinking about it. And unless anybody who posts this, they look at a blank uh, <laughs> uh, Facebook status where it says, what's on your mind, comma, your name. And then they feel like they have to answer, you know? <laughs> well, that would be prompted, I suppose. I guess it would, but but it's grayed out so it's like you can, you, you know you can you can you can take the suggestion what's in oh, your mind man. too damn true you know um, that's see i i think yeah we have not talked about this on the show we uh last week i think it was last week or maybe the week before uh we talked about the me colon also me colon yeah oh, and this right, is right. it's a similar sort of setup a similar beast well, some minute mm. uh some minute difference but uh which I one's think- which one's worse i don't know I don't I I don't like I don't like the whole setup of like nobody and then space and then one that I saw was like people at Burning Man and it's a picture of like the the Rugrats running naked. Do you remember that episode? Oh, they're yeah, they're yeah. dressed up as like Native Americans. But like, f- but like butt ass naked. Yeah. 
<laughs> Damn, dude. I bet everyone at Coach Hell is like, shit, we should reconsider. <laughs> yeah. Fucking, fucking own, man. You, you want to you wanna open up some minds with comedy, you know? Change, you you got to speak truth to power. Yeah, and power is the people who are <laughs> putting on native headdresses and running around <laughs> California. Oh, Dude, it was, that that episode of Rugrats where they were uh, all doing ayahuasca was uh, pretty pretty strange, man. Classic. Dude. Uh, Br- Brett, did you have a punishment for these uh, these people with this, I don't know, what you, you call it a problem? They're, uh, they're, they're meme makers. Yeah. They well, are the... Uh, the what, whatever the Willy Wonka quote is, God, yeah, the, fuck, the the makers of memes. Oh Jesus! Well, that would have been better if we uh, remember how the quote went, but that's fine. Yeah, you, yeah. you fill in the blanks at home. Google it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. That's fucking right. <laughs> Google it. Um, here's the punishment: you get your um, that filter, you know. The filter that we all have when we, when we say, "Hey, maybe I shouldn't say that." Well, that's that's taken away by the state, and you now have to post literally everything that pops into your head. It's like that movie, uh, "The Invention of Lying," uh, starring that guy who is like, uh, "Are you offended?" <laughs> oh, did I say something to offend you? Oh, 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 oh it's too bad, isn't it? <laughs> hey, that guy's kind of—he's kind of got that problem. He just sort of says whatever he thinks. Hey, nobody blank. Ricky Gervais, God isn't real. No, here's the, oh, wait. Okay, wait. it's good. It's good again. Here's the twist. Here's the twist. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. God, colon, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. A two-part joke. A uh, two-part meme. I don't yeah. know, but we have the attention span for that. You or would not. have to post it like as a separate image. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or like a good, like that'd be a good comeback from like someone who disagrees. Anyway, Grant. Would you like to uh, continue the show? Yeah. I had to yawn. Excuse me. All right. I didn't have to bring attention to it. We could have just cut it out, but you said continue the no, show. Zwick, so. keep it in. We're not cutting Zwick, anything out. add in a yawn sound effect, please. <laughs> we're, at, um, yeah, we're actually adding more. Cutting nothing, adding more. Yeah. Um, so I this is semi, not really fully internet related, but I feel like it's one of those things where because you you have certain friends that you know uh, you went to high school with or college with, and you you don't see them or talk to them for a long time, and then but you still sort of keep track of like what everyone's doing on Facebook and whatever. Um, do you guys know people that have moved to Colorado? <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Like yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> a, a lot of people, like a lot of people move to Colorado like that's just if you uh, decide you want to move somewhere you move to Colorado the listeners at home can't see this but I'm scratching my head and I'm raising an eyebrow and I'm going gee I can't imagine why anybody would want to move to Colorado well I get I get the joke well, hold on, let me, let me okay, I'm like yeah, pretending yeah. to smoke a little uh, oh okay yeah oh wait 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 hold on hold on hold on, hold on. sorry to interrupt uh huh yeah mm mm <laughs> Hold it in. Oh, that's that Denver Kush, baby. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> we uh, interrupted this important point. Yeah, but um, well, well first of all, the, the whole thing is like one. Yeah, that that point doesn't make any sense because a lot of states are legalizing pot now, including where our good friend Brett lives. So what you just heard on Mike was one hundred percent legal, baby. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> and soon to be Illinois too, so we'll see. Pro- probably. Uh, in the meantime, I'm fucking coked out on CBD oil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah, you, you, are you fucking tripping right now? Uh, I don't know, man. I'm kind of feeling chill. Fuck, fuck um, yeah, dude. So anyway, these uh, these these Coloradans, Colo- Coloradoans, they they're like cult members, man. Everybody that lives in Colorado that I've interacted with, I was just there uh, over the weekend uh, visiting family. They're all cult members. How do you mean? They're all in like the cult of Colorado. Like it's sort of like the Church of Scientology, except instead of like having infiltrated the IRS, they're just like their own government, which is even more terrifying. Can you give me an example of like something that somebody would say in Colorado? Yeah, they all want you to move to Colorado. Okay, hold on, hold on. 
every single person that lives in Colorado, when you tell them that you're from out of state, they want you to move to Colorado. They're like, you should move here, man. Nobody, That's how they all fucking talk. Nobody, colon. People who live in <laughs> Colorado, colon, you must move to Colorado. They do. Whoa, it's, it's fucking weird. It's It's like, hey, check out my church. Like, it's the same weird mentality of like i i don't want whatever you're partaking in i just don't it's not pot it's it's these fucking like it's it's weird sorry go ahead it's pot but it's also like having a beard and knowing a lot about craft beer and liking the outdoors ah and like exactly breweries with like a special like water mix for dogs called like the <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like, you're yeah. fucking hitting the nail on the head, and that's why I fucking hate it so much. Smelling and, like, stinky. They all, mm-hmm. like, there's, like, a Colorado uniform of, like, here. here's a good example. I was at a restaurant with my sister, and we're sitting there, and she looks over at this guy that's outside um, outside the window, and he's wearing, it's it's, like, 30, 40 degrees outside or so. He's wearing this giant, like, puffy vest. And he's wearing sandals. Oh, yeah. Yep. Like, how fucking... And that's just what people... She's like, yeah, that's like the Colorado uniform. Why? <laughs> what's wrong with you people? Well, what's... You, are you complaining because it was too cold out to wear that? No, he was... He was wearing, a, like, a big heavy jacket, but then he was wearing, like, sandals. How, it's, what were you, it's, how it's about like pants? Functionally just like normal, incongruent. like, jeans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's functionally incongruent. Exactly. I see. They're they're all like this weird level of like conservative hipster. Yes. Oh, that's good. It's it's really it's yeah it's or conservative hippie or whatever because they're uh, a lot of areas just have this weird like I I don't know how to describe it. It like even politically a lot of those people out in Colorado just like don't make sense. Like I I don't I don't know what it is. What do you what do you mean? Like they're they're all incredibly like socially liberal to a point but then like there's parts of them that just like aren't i i i don't know i don't know where i'm going with this See, it just doesn't like, make sense like, i want to i want to smoke weed but also respect the cops and uh seriously check out kamala harris's platform <laughs> yeah no that's exactly yeah. that's exactly fucking right and everyone there has like like a top 5 favorite like like base jumpers <laughs> And the in the fucking outdoorsy shit, it's like you only just want to be on vacation all the time. You just don't want to exist in like the real world of like, you know, walking around and having a stranger spit in your face like a normal, you know, fucking person like from Chicago or New York. It's like you want to go hiking like what the fuck you're walking. You're fucking walking. Not much of a hobby. Uh, Nico says from the chat, not all cops and addiction is a choice. <laughs> That's very funny. God bless. Um, yeah, it's, it, there is like a certain type of person that like moves out there and I'm, and I'm sure it's a fucking awesome place. I'm sure I'd have a great time there, but it, so, something about it seems to me like, like Vegas for people who can't be away from their four wheeler for too long. But yeah, that's, that's, you're, you're fucking seriously hitting the nail on the head. <laughs> it, have you spent a lot of time out there, or do you just know a lot of people that? <laughs> no, I just know like all like everyone who I know who has like moved out there is like a, a, of a similar like cut from a similar cloth. Yeah, exactly. It's it's super fucking weird. It's like I can like a lot of different states, not just here, but a lot of different places. It's like you'll run into different people of different ethnicities and different origins, different belief systems, and like you know. It, Especially in a place like Chicago, for instance, it's like you got a big fucking melding pot of all of these different people. There's only one type of person in Colorado. <laughs> yeah, I, and I, to be fair, I feel like a lot, like a lot of big cities have like a similar type of like, like archetypal, like someone who is championing the idea of living there. There's definitely like a Detroit kind of person. And yeah. like, or like the New I Yorker mean, who wants yeah. to get a slice. <laughs> oh, yeah, but for some reason has that accent, but moved there from like <laughs> <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> yeah, and they they all want you to fucking oh move here, man. Look, you got the mountains; it's beautiful, great. I, I just I have a, a like a, a deep seated like problem with any place that has like a lot of like 
leisure. Like, yeah, I was in Toronto, which I love Toronto, but it's like, it, it, there does seem like everyone there just seems to be like, just extremely chill. I'm like, it's cold out. Aren't you guys like mad at everything? Yeah. You're supposed to be mad at everything all the time. Yeah. Aren't you supposed to just never enjoy anything? And yeah, I mean, well, to be fair, if I, if I lived in Colorado, I'd be mad all the time because I'd have to deal with people from Colorado. (laughs) Uh, My advice to you, uh, don't move there. I will not. <laughs> thank, thank you for thank you for uh, breaking the chain of that. I got I'm getting sick of hearing fucking move out here, man. <laughs> you can go yeah. mountain biking anytime you want. So once you're done can... on, once you're done on your bike, you can jump on a whitewater raft. It's a lot of fun. Says so uh, somebody who probably doesn't know anything about you. They're just like, <laughs> I thought you had all of my hobbies. <laughs> <laughs> You have Dude. hobbies of your own. You like doing like stand up comedy and stuff. Uh, well, mm-hmm. uh, you do that you, sh- fucking shit here. Yeah, or just stop doing it and uh, learn how to ski, man. Learn how to snowboard. <laughs> Peace Go man. base jumping. It's it's a great place to sit inside. Let weed dictate your personality. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a? Is there like? You know, it's a punishment when we um, sick these fuckers. Yeah, let them secede. Get them out of here. <laughs> the, the country of Colorado. <laughs> the country of Colorado. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just the. Yeah. Let's get him out. And the the president is just a beer koozie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's uh, let's move on. Uh, so if you haven't listened to Thought Cops before, every week we investigate the Internet's outrage inducing news stories. And then we sentence each perpetrator to a cruel and often very unusual punishment. So. Let's talk about the big fish this week. <clears throat> Presidential candidate Andrew Yang has a mean problem. Yang 2020. Yang gang. Perhaps you've heard these phrases in the last week. <laughs> and I just All right, say, Walter. I <laughs> and I just want to say, uh, Andrew Yang supporters, be smart with your memes. Hey, there's a lot of collateral damage that can occur in mimetic warfare. It's true. So, uh, Andrew Yang is a relatively unknown uh, presidential candidate for the Democratic Party. Hey, relatively unknown. He was on the Joe Rogan Experience I'm- podcast, which is, as we all know, Oprah for dude bros. <laughs> true. <laughs> and so, until then, until that bombshell appearance, uh, I guess on Reddit, on the uh, Yang for President uh, subreddit, which is surprisingly uh, earnest... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, that's the best part. <laughs> they they warn supporters against creating anything that might reflect poorly on the candidate. "Quote: I get it." The author warned. You want to show off how dark your sense of humor is. Pro Ying memes are fine, but the latest flood of Pepe and Trump adjacent rage comics are not. They reinforce the stereotypes we are trying to avoid. So I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but yeah. 4chan seems to have completely jumped ship from Trump. In one week, to <laughs> Yang, all because he says you get a thousand dollars a month. <laughs> I, gu- I guess they're doing socialism now. <laughs> well, the, the way I the way I see it, the, what I've put together about about these Yang memes is that the young MAGA youth are now disenfranchised because he hasn't, I, I don't know, arrested the deep state or something. So yeah. that they're like, well, the world's going to shit anyway. Might as well have it go to shit, but also have a thousand dollars a month. <laughs> that, <laughs> Which I'm honestly, actually pretty funny. I've seen that exact quote from people. It's like, oh, fuck it, thousand bucks. Yeah, and our our politics channel on the Discord has been completely taken over by uh, by Yang memes, dude. I like I I clicked on like one tweet from. From Andrew Yang, and I, I saw like I saw like the the first Yang meme, and I was like, "This is amazing." And then I found like so much more. I was like, "This is obviously 4chan." So I go to 4chan, and I find like just a treasure trove. And it's like very quickly, I had to stop myself and be like, "What am I? What am I doing?" Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I'm just wasting space. In my phone saving all these. I'm gonna send them to a bunch of people. They're gonna be like, "That, that okay." The and thing about the like, Yang yeah. gang is that it seems to be drawn from all across the political spectrum. Yeah, I, w- I wanted to the, uh, yeah. get to that because you mentioned uh, how there's sort of been a uh, like a shift in like a lot of these like alt right people that uh, all of a sudden they within a week jump ship to uh, from the Trump boat 
to the Yang boat. And uh, at first I thought, like, there, there's a lot of things that, you know, go and play in these types of situations. Um, what I thought happened at first was all of these non, non-alt-right non people were creating alt-right adjacent memes to sort of go like, oh, look, we're all abandoning ship. But then people that I know that I follow on Twitter that are Trump, like definite Trump supporters, were legitimately unironically posting Yang memes. And I'm like, hey, no, this is le- this is legitimate. Like they actually do like they've clobbed down to it. It's all about that hat. That's what yeah. these guys love, hats. <laughs> they just I think, want hats. I think, this, I think we figured out <laughs> what have wins elections the, uh, here. Have you seen the hat, Brett? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, back in, you know, 2013, when I was discovering this w- w- weird-ass internet genre of vaporwave, yes. I, n- I never thought that would come into play in my presidential politics. <laughs> but here we are, you know? Brett, have you heard uh, Jordan Peterson wave? Oh, yeah, oh. absolutely. <laughs> it's It's fantastic. Or Bernie wave, I've, yeah, I've heard. I've heard every every variation. Every There's wave. like Fash wave, this Trump wave, <laughs> Simpsons wave, Hitler wave, <laughs> Hitler wave. Yeah, I haven't seen I, that one. I haven't seen it either, but I'm assuming it's there. <laughs> I mean, if it's not, I mean, you're sitting on a whatever the opposite of a gold mine is. So, like you said, uh, shit pile. Yeah, there you go. It, Andrew Yang did not really come into the zeitgeist until he appeared on the Joe Rogan experience. However, uh, he is not naive to what's happening here. He says, for anyone with this agenda, we do not want your support. You are not welcome in this campaign. And then he called them a basket of deplorables and got ejected (laughs) immediately from politics. (laughs) The end. And we all lived happily never after. (laughs) The end. Yeah, I'm I'm really curious to see what's going to come of this because he's obviously like the meme candidate. Where- I mean, yeah, it's like in in a world where everybody has their own Patreon, Yang just gives you one. <laughs> he just gives a thousand bucks to yeah. everybody's Patreon. Now, what what's what's often being overlooked and I hate to get all policy on everybody here, but he did mention on the Joe Rogan experience uh that if you're already receiving $500 in government aid, you only get $500 of his neat bucks or whatever they call it. <laughs> no education, not in employment or training. Neat. And that's do we have a word of the week this week? Wait, is that is that what it means? You found it. Yeah, I I I think we actually I think we've already done neat. We might have, but fuck it. I don't, I don't have another one. We don't have a list. <laughs> uh, neat. Yeah, it says sir, not. It stands for not in education, not in employment, not in training. Uh, oh, is so it just like being like living the dream, basically? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, Yang, uh, neat bucks. I mean, you can probably, you know, some people could probably live off a thousand bucks a month, right? Depending on where you live. You yeah. can't hear. Yeah. No, not here, but like uh-huh. middle of nowhere, you know? Yeah, I mean, hey, this, I'm not complaining about a thousand bucks a month. I'd, I'd be into that. Shoot, me neither. Well, so there, there's this, uh, counter example of, uh, or not counter example, but, uh, further explanation, or, so there's this further exploration of, uh, what you're talking about. Uh, I'm reading, this is called the Clover Chronicle. I don't know if this is a real fucking website, but someone posted it. Maybe it's, uh, maybe this is satire. I have no idea anymore. But uh, believe whatever it says. Yeah, I'm going to just go with it. Uh, Hashtag Yang Gang exposed insider claims 2020 hopeful Andrew Yang is paying groups of online meme operators to influence future voters. Oh, come on. And it's this like expose of of him saying like, hey, (sighs) this worked for Donald Trump. Why won't this work for us? And so he he very well could be the mastermind behind this. And uh, we we don't know. Uh, This is this is a very solid. uh you know, conspiracy theory. Dude, I believe that. That's totally within, like, how he talks about automation and, like, technology. Like, yeah. th- there's no way he's not trying to mine every piece of, like, resource that he has. Yeah, I don't I don't see why not. It's not like it's a bad idea. Uh, some guy said, uh, we get paid about $40 an hour. It's pretty worth it for most people considering their background. Imagine posting an Andrew Yang meme or creating these memes and getting paid $40 an hour. That means you only get uh, 960 bucks a month. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> 40 bucks an hour. I mean, isn't that like, why wouldn't, they, why wouldn't you just pay him a thousand bucks a month? I guess it does add up, right? I don't yes, know. I don't, good, I don't know how that's counting. I, I don't know if you punch a time clock or what, but. I just, I just want to hear that recruiting process where like they track down like the first person to post a meme and be like, Hey kid, do you want to work for an unknown democratic presidential candidate? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I've always been a Trump guy, but <laughs> Hey, what the hell? It's yeah. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I, I want to see like Beto O'Rourke like scrambling to be like, <laughs> we gotta get, we gotta get Beto's face on that boy. <laughs> Be- Beto wave. There's your Beto answer. Wave. <laughs> yeah. Beto Nico in the chat says, uh, Beto O'Dork. Damn. Damn. He's, He's done. done. He's done. <laughs> fucking got dunked on hard. Yeah. That's yeah, so, you know uh, that you like. The amount that goes into these presidential campaigns, like, you know that every single one of them has, like, a meme department where they're keeping track of everything. Or, or at least you, they will be if they get enough, you know, money in their uh, could, in their campaign. Could you fucking imagine, like, that's your job? Could you imagine that being your job is the, the head of memeology for the Bernie Sanders campaign? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we're losing to this Andrew Yegg guy. <laughs> we need more more Bernie Wave videos out there. <laughs> He's just got like an editing bay filled with like. <laughs> we we need a hat. Is he somebody busy? create a hat? Bernie's so old. He's uh he's still saying that feel win and uh <laughs> you mad bro and stuff like that. Too. He's posting scumbag Steve oh, and it's Donald yeah. Trump. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Bernie Sanders when he loses he's gonna be like fuck yeah. <laughs> and then Andrew Yang wins and then like a boss but you know the funny thing about all of those memes is uh, they're all just like four years old but that's just more how fast that. internet time moves I know it's more than that but four years not that's that like long ago that boy or something not that long ago though but, I mean, if I could get serious here for a minute, uh, you know, there's cats that are working longer hours for lower wages that, that can't has cheeseburger. And that's something that, that's something that we need to address as a country. All these cats that can't has cheeseburger. I, I'm, I'm thinking that Yang has yet to address the issue, but I don't know. <laughs> he's too busy, uh, with Pepe with a pink hat. Well, he made, he made something about, uh, someone asked him if, since he's giving people, uh, a thousand bucks a month if he would give like if he would have a thousand doggos a month in the white house and he <laughs> responded to it so maybe maybe cat can has a thousand cheeseburgers a month and andrew yang's uh strange uh capitalist socialist utopia whatever the fuck <laughs> all right andrew yang i got your punishment well we're punishing the people that are abusing these memes right i don't know <laughs> How's your show work? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> How about just a, a, a blanket punishment? Uh, if you make a Yang meme, you make one Yang meme, that's $1 off a month. <laughs> Yang bucks, we call them. Oh, yeah. That's one less Yang buck. It's called the uh, the Yang meme dividend. You still get the thousand, but if you if you... If you get that extra taken in, then you get the that taken out. So it, it averages to the same amount regardless. Vote Yang. Yeah, that mean, I mean, shit, you know? Yeah, so if he pays you 40 bucks an hour to uh, create that, then you get that taken out, but you still get that from him. See, I feel like the Andrew Yang thing is like what you're, you've been trying to do with the Howard Schultz thing. Not really. Um, Except this I don't one know just if I want to really get into why. Because I like Howard, Sch- <laughs> Howard Schultz's entire uh, like political ideology is that like, both sides are like it's it's literally his entire political ideology is horseshoe theory, which is hilarious to me. Um, and like his only position is like, oh, we don't want to go too far one way or the other. We just have to embrace the center, which like I I empathize with trying to understand people's wants and needs politically within a certain aspect, but like to say like, oh, the answer somewhere in the middle is legitimately retarded. Yeah, that, so. that answer is basically like, look, I'm just I'm just sick of people not getting along. <laughs> look. Hey, speaking of uh retarded, Homer Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with that guy 
There's something wrong with him. I guess uh, anyway, he is nuts. You may be wondering where I'm going with this. Uh, yeah. Simpsons uh, live in Springfield. <clears throat> anyway, the Simpsons uh, have... What state? Uh, but I, I want to say it, but the, uh, this week has to put a big beep over it, so we don't ever find out. Um, so the Sim- the whole Michael Jackson thing came out, the documentary came out on uh, HBO recently. Did you guys watch that? Not yet. Brett, did you watch that? Uh... Wait, oh, the Michael Jackson finding thing? Finding Neverland? Leaving or Neverland. Leaving Neverland. Oh, yeah, no. Finding Neverland is that, like, sad story about, like, the guy who wrote Peter Pan and died or something. They're both sad. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, um, Sim- apparently, uh, Matt Groening and a couple of the other Simpsons producers, you know, they saw the doc and they sat down and they're like, you know what? Let's watch that season two episode, Stark Raving Dad, where Michael Jackson may or may not have voiced a character in the episode, which this confirms they, that it yeah, was him. Yeah, they said that he did, yeah. So, they said, yup, that was him, and uh, yup, we're pulling it from the syndication, and all future releases of Simpsons box sets, DVDs, Blu-rays, etc., uh, will now not have this episode on them. And I wonder, do you think that they knew about this before? And now that it's like public knowledge, uh, I don't. I mean, Michael Jackson did go through an entire court case like nearly a decade ago over these exact allegations. So it's one of those things where it's like it's been kicking around for a while. But I guess there was more compelling evidence in this documentary. I guess I don't. I don't know. I mean, plus, like after you know, in, in a post Me Too world, like these kinds of things get taken. I guess more seriously, which is kind of fucked up that those they weren't back in the day. But yeah, like the the acqu- the fact that he was acquitted, I think, gave a lot of people like this weird peace of mind that that he's just a, a regular old weirdo, not like an extreme weirdo. <laughs> yeah, but I I don't know. I always thought that it was like pretty well known, but apparently apparently not. I always thought the guy was a little freaky the way he dressed, and walked backwards. Yeah, and. and <laughs> I don't. I don't trust anyone who makes up dances for fun. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, find another hobby like uh, base jumping and uh, yeah. mountain biking, and skiing, yeah. and <laughs> enjoying <laughs> enjoying beer. Yeah, it's just fuck out of here. Yeah, because d- didn't he play like I, I don't know? It's not like he's going to be receiving royalties from that. I don't know. That's 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 a weird. That's a that's a head scratcher. He's been dead for some time. Yeah, yeah, well, I guess his estate would, so I guess his children. Um, I don't, I, I don't know how that works. Oh, well, you know what? That's <laughs> that's honestly one of the worst things that come out of this whole thing. He's ruining the legacy of the Simpsons. <laughs> Sorry, Brad. What was that? You cut out there for a sec. <laughs> it's probably best that it cut out. It was, uh, it was uh, delegitimizing everything. <laughs> So hilarious. I said that's that's the worst thing to come out of all this is that he's ruining the Simpsons. <laughs> yeah, goddamn right. Yeah, just kidding. The episode's okay. Yeah, I mean, I, it was a little weird. It was it was very centered around the fact that this Michael Jackson guy is in it. Well, it was like he did. It wasn't the singing parts. I guess somebody else voiced the singing parts, but uh, the big fat yellow guy was uh, <laughs> who thought he was Michael Jackson. That was really. Uh, the Rachel Dolezal of the 90s. <laughs> yeah, it was, everything was so simple back then. It was cartoons that we were worried about. I don't, like, has he been in any other, like, movies or TV shows? Uh, South Park, I think. No, I'm just kidding. That obviously <laughs> was not him. It'd be so funny if he voiced that episode just not understanding the context. Well, uh, he apparently, it's like a similar situation with The Simpsons. He may or may not, wink, wink have contributed to the Sonic the Hedgehog 3 soundtrack. Oh, I didn't even think about that. So what's what's that going to... We're going to pull that game off the shelves? Or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pull, uh, pull the movie. Cancel the movie. Okay. Cancel the Sonic movie. Uh, nah. So nah, I want to show Nico in the chat, uh, the only current listener, uh, get get in here. D- don't Donate some money. Listen to the live chat. Um, but Nico brings up a good point, which is, uh, what if Michael Jackson wanted to fuck Bart? <laughs> <laughs> she also said, uh, uh, this is inappropriate. <laughs> also, good thing. Ar- <laughs> I just wanted to do the voice. <laughs> I knew you'd get to that eventually. 
Well, <laughs> he's like, come here, I got Butterfinger BBs. <laughs> Well, you can have all the slingshots you want. I mean, we were making and Michael then, Jackson jokes like this for like twenty years, and all, and now we gotta stop. Come on, yeah. No, it's it's kind of like a godsend to all these like like aging comedians who had Michael Jackson jokes the first time around, who now are just like bingo. Yeah. <laughs> Let it cool down for about a week. Yeah, baby, we're in. Uh, so uh, what, we punish the Simpsons. Uh, <laughs> the Simpsons got to take out every problematic celebrity guest host that's ever been on the show. And let's just say a lot of celebrities have come to visit Springfield over the years. Mm, that's right. Um, I have to go through the list, but... Uh, How many of them were uh, kitty diddlers? I don't know, but I think every time the Simpsons comes up on the show, which is for some reason kind of often... <laughs> um, we have the same punishment every time. Cancel the fucking cancel show. Cancel Simpsons. <laughs> now, hey, now that's some cancel culture. I can get hey, behind. <laughs> I'm just glad that uh, Michael Jackson wasn't alive to see this Apu uh, guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. What's, continue what's more egregious? Do his thing. Answer me that. Anyway, um, uh, do you think I maybe think they that did that because of because they got a bunch of flack for how they handled the uh, Apu thing? I don't know, man. I, I think that they're just, you know, trying to, you know... Keep their head above water. Yeah. yeah. I don't... I, I do think that uh, you, you sort of bring up a good point with that, though. Uh, we do bring up the Simpsons and the Kardashians, and a lot of these weird things, like, have recurring lifetimes within the show, and it's like... It's, it's strange to think that, uh, like, this is just how people view reality is through this stupid, vapid shit that, like, doesn't at the end of the day, doesn't really matter. Like, The Simpsons was an important, iconic 90s cartoon, but it's, at the end of the day, a cartoon that doesn't exist in real life, you know? Like, it exists, but it's not, like... They're not real. You're yeah, they're not, the fu- they're not fucking real. Like, the voice actors are real, but the characters aren't real. And hold the on, fact that people have to, like, keep going back to, like, oh, well, uh, we have to view this from the from the lens of like the simpsons it's fucking weird brings it all home yeah i mean it's just how many times have you seen something like come up in the news and your in your first thought is damn i can't wait to hear what the simpsons have to say about this <laughs> uh personally i'm waiting for south park to weigh in on the issue yeah i'm a family guy guys so i'm like what's stewie gotta say <laughs> i can't wait till <laughs> Ew, michael jackson stay away from me yeah I mean, yeah, yeah. Stewie yeah. stuff. Yo, I, here's 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 my thought. What if we recut leaving uh, Michael Jackson, but with we 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 cut in a bunch of freaking Stewie Griffin going, <laughs> what the fuck, what the deuce? Oh my god, that- <laughs> I'm already laughing. Hey, Lois, have you seen Stewie? <laughs> yeah. He's not at Neverland Ranch, is he? <laughs> All right. <laughs> 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 let's, let's move on to something else. <laughs> wait, wait. This is Whoa, it looks. To be honest, no. Let's, wait, no. Wait. Uh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, you ready? You ready? <laughs> wait, wait. Suck my dick, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll eat your shorts. <laughs> and, I'll, eat, I'll eat your shorts. And your ass. Hee <laughs> 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 hee. my ass, man. <laughs> uh, Greg, you, have, you have Tucker Carlson uh, written here. What's going on there? Tucker Carlson. Uh, he called people in Iraq primitive monkeys. Uh, he used the F word to describe gay people. Uh, he defended uh, marital rape with underage girls and... Uh, he refuses to apologize for any of it. <laughs> okay, that's epic. <laughs> I love if we talk about the light stuff on the show, you know? No. Light topics. Uh, you, you missed a, a really big one. What's that? Uh, his his uh, his god dang haircut. <laughs> <laughs> what? What's going on with that thing? What's this guy wear a bow tie? What's wrong with him? <laughs> I did. I did kind of. Yeah. What a fucking dork through and through. <laughs> I, 
He's, oh man, I I honestly didn't pay attention to the story much. I only saw that he like didn't apologize, which yeah. was kind of refreshing. But I mean, still fuck that guy. Yeah. But, well, I heard the reason why he didn't want to apologize was uh, he said if if I do something wrong or if I say something wrong, I'll apologize for it. Um, but but I will not apologize to the Soros-funded mainstream media. <laughs> Which is just like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? He's on Fox News. He's part of the mainstream media. I guess yeah, he's not Soros funded. He's, he's the the Koch brothers funded media. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't uh, like all of these tapes keep sort of popping up of him saying different things on either his show or radio shows. Um, yeah, it was it was Bubba the Love Sponge's like shock jock radio show. Who's yeah, that the, was the thing with the underage girls thing, right? Yeah, and like that was the guy who like who like he had Hulk Hogan fuck his wife or something like that, and then when they had to go to court, it was a whole thing. I was just told about this from all my wrestling f- friends, but Christ, yeah, like there's a weird connection with who like the guy who hosts the show where he said all this shit. It was like a Howard Stern light kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Which, hey, maybe here's a here's an idea. Maybe don't try to be like Mister Public News Guy if <laughs> if you have like recordings of you. Like I don't even know what he said, but yeah, uh, I, I I heard a short clip of it. Um, it was something along the lines of this. Uh, forgive me if I'm fucking butchering it because I'm sure that I am. Um, this weird, like, religious sort of pseudo cult thing or something like that, where this guy was, uh, like, marrying these underage girls or whatever. They were, like, 16, and he was, like, 30 or something like that. I'm, pro- I'm probably fucking butchering this. And he was like, listen, that's different because, um, you know, they're staying with them and they're uh, taking care of them for the rest of their life. And it's like, yeah, but that's an underage girl and that's, like, rape. It's not like you're you're not at the age where you can consent to that, and yeah, like the maybe I'm getting lost in the details of like what the specific thing is, but it's like yeah, I think the the whole point of view of like you're trying to be you're trying to be a serious political pundit, and like you're getting caught saying like just dumb shit that doesn't even need to be justified for any reason. Um, the whole him calling like Iraqis thing uh, prim- primitive monkeys is like not surprising you know i think cer- certain things in regards to this are landing certain things aren't i don't yeah. know i mean it, it's it, it the sh- short like clip that i listened to which wasn't nearly all of it but i mean it was pretty clear that he was just like being a hack radio shock jock like just yeah. trying to take like the controversial like oh i'm a pig opinion which which kind of just like frames his whole career as like Obviously, you're just doing things to get a rise out of people, and you know that, like, yeah. So it's, I, I, it's, it's insane to me that like he he was even someone that people would take seriously in the first place. But I, I mean, don't think that I don't that think that he was at really. first. I think maybe that's how his uh, initial career could have started. Which you know, like, I don't necessarily begrudge that in and of itself because I know a lot of people like you know start off their career doing one thing. And I mean, look at like Al Franken, for instance, which, yeah, I know not the greatest example, but it's like he started off as a comedian doing like things that, you know, nowadays could be seen as distasteful. And then, you know, goes on to become a senator, like making serious policy decisions. I get that it's not always like this dictates what the past doesn't always dictate what you do in the future. But I don't think he was always taken that seriously when he was working for CNN or anything like that. And then he's, I think since he's been doing his like main show in Fox news right now, I think he's trying to clean up his act a little bit more and be the guy who has like idiot leftists on his show, like just run their mouths while he just like smirks at the camera or whatever the fuck, (laughs) you know, he's cornered the market there in that respect. Yeah, and I what I do like is just how this exposes like a like an important truth to all like like all all like all mainstream media like CNN or I mean any of the cable news channels or any like radio news or news source is that it's all just like under the umbrella of 
broadcasting. So like the guy giving the weather or the guy doing like a voiceover for like a Toyota dealership commercial, it's like in the same vein as like, like somebody who's seen as political, like, you know, like Rush Limbaugh or Tuckle, Cuck, Tuckle, Tuck, Cuck, 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 what's his name? Cucker Cuck, Tarlson. Cuckle Tarlson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tire, tire fuckerson, tire fucker Carlson. But yeah, it's just like these people are just broadcasters who are there to make to like get ratings and yeah. to confuse that with anything that's actually political is is insane. Because like you could have like this like the smartest, most insightful like mind of politics, and if they can't get that point across, you know, like. And, and come in like right before the, they cut to commercial, then, you know, they're not the one representing like the news on TV. Yeah. It's just, and like, I, I hope this just, just, you know, chips away at the idea that any of this is something to be respected. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I always feel like the, the people that are the smartest and that have like respectable point of views that can really suss things out and explain to you why something is or isn't like good in a certain sense or anything like that. Like the, like the Noam Chomsky's of the world. He's always, uh, like my go to of like an intellectual who's incredibly, bo- like incredibly smart, but incredibly boring to listen to. Like no- Noam <laughs> Chomsky could never have like a fucking, uh, a fucking, show on Fox News or on CNN or on MSNBC because he literally talks too slow. He I talks love too to slow. Fox News presents the Noam Chomsky <laughs> hour. <laughs> Where they just bring in like a, a studio audience just to heckle him. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah, you're right. I mean, he's like, I've I've tried to listen to like lectures of his before and it's like, ah, yeah. Jesus Christ, dude. No, no. Zizek, it's, on the other hand, is, is fucking amazing. <laughs> Jesus, I can't, I can't fucking listen to. Isn't him. he supposed to debate Jordan Peterson soon? That'll be a big yeah. fucking shit show, man. That will be yeah. the most irritating piece of audio I will listen to <laughs> over and over again. Well, uh, you know the problem with uh, you know the the concept of Eastern Western ideologies is the uh, the you sovereignty see, of the Western civilization, the Eastern civilization, of the individual. There we go. Now, that's, that's I, as, as the moderator of this debate, <laughs> Tucker Carlson, I have a question for both of you. Uh, now, wh- why do you hate freedom? <laughs> sorry, I was trying to. I was trying to improv. No, you, you cut out there. Sorry. Oh, I was being Tucker, Tucker Carlson as the moderator. All you have to do is uh, look at the person like they're eating a jar of mayonnaise. That's how they do a <laughs> Tucker Carlson impression. Yeah. Um, yeah, but like. You know, going back to that, it's like, yeah, Noam Chomsky could never have be a successful like broadcaster. But at the same time, uh, you know, people who are sensationalist always just do better in that sphere. But it's like, why are we listening to them? You know, don't yeah. don't listen. Don't listen to anybody. Yeah, don't listen Make to anybody. Make up your own fucking mind. Yeah, just you. You do the research. It's it's sort of like that. Uh, what the nine eleven loose change video. Uh, Don't which, watch any videos. Make your own fucking mind. <laughs> no, up. but at the end, they're like, uh, <laughs> it's up to you to decide if our research was good. And you're like, well, it wasn't. <laughs> well, there you go. He's like, all right, but maybe that's not true either. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, dude. Cut to credits. Uh, yeah, so what do we, what do we do with uh Cucker Tarlson here? Making me to jar of mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> Sold. I think he, right, has to, um, he has to debate ahead. Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson has to <laughs> he has to debate Cucker Tarlson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just like the the lib version of him. Yeah. S- staring contest. So we already did this week's Thought Cops Word of the Week. Neat. Go back and hit rewind on your VCR if you missed it. Uh, this week's Key to the City. I, I yeet Go. for the neat. Leap for that neat bucks. Uh, I'm not lifting a fucking finger for my neat bucks. Um, the Key to the City. Uh, now, Brett, I know it's been a little while since you've been on the show. Each time, or we all have our own Key to the City. It, it's just whatever good, positive thing you want to say at the end of the yeah, episode. Yeah, we're going to close out on a, oh. on a positive note. So we put okay. all this negative negative energy out in the world and we seal the Ziploc bag with one tiny mention of positivity. Grant, what's yours? Yeah, my uh, my key to the city this week goes to uh, Jerry Seinfeld. Oh, he's um, funny. Yeah, he's. Uh, have you guys heard of him? Have you seen him? Have you heard him? He's got oh, that, wait, that's oh, yeah. Lino. Never mind. He's got that funny show. 
What's uh, what's oh. the name of it? Is it the Comedians in the Cars show? It's one of no, it, you're talking about this, the show that Seinfeld was on? Yeah, what's, what's that called? Oh, I mean, it's pretty obvious. It's the marriage ref. <laughs> <laughs> Bait and switch, baby. Um, Wait, he wasn't yeah, so, on that, was he? He was just the executive producer. My bad. I thought, wasn't he the host? I, I never actually Tom fucking Papa. watched it. Who? Yeah, I mean, well, I, you know, I, I, I would give you the DVDs, but there's an episode that they have on it that had Michael Jackson. So. <laughs> <laughs> cut, <laughs> cut. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, Jerry Seinfeld, he, uh, I, we've mentioned on this show a couple of times, um, and I've, this is like a repeated talking point that I still hear people, uh, you know, repeat, obviously. Not to be redundant, but uh, people people still hold this sentiment of like, anytime you're talking about PC culture, and especially in the realm of uh, comedy nowadays, people will say, uh, Jerry Seinfeld won't play colleges anymore, you know? Yeah. And we'll make fun of him and be like, Jerry Seinfeld never played colleges. So he was talking to Ricky Gervais for whatever reason on some TV show that I can't, I don't even know what it was. And he was like, I never was a serious- said that. So he never said that. What'd you say, Brett? Oh, it was on his his serious XM uh, talk show. Ricky Gervais's. Yes, yes. And it, I, I'm I'm curious why this is coming up now because it kind of it came out like over the summer. But I did hear that, and I was like, th- like yes, thank you, like thanks for clearing this up because it it did seem kind of like kind of like a weird media twist on something. Yeah, because everyone's like, yeah, Jerry Seinfeld never played colleges like he in one episode of seinfeld he did did he yeah i don't remember is when he had that uh that manager i watched her recently oh yeah i I do remember she was like he kept focusing on the pilot in the audience oh yeah flew him to the college oh right right i was obsessed with him (laughs) 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 you had to point him out (laughs) oh yeah with the with the manager and everything yeah. yeah, just great, just great, 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 great. But, but uh, I mean, to to defend Jerry Seinfeld, which I I find myself doing a lot. Um, <laughs> Go he, off. He needs it. He needs someone to defend him. Yeah, I mean, he's like one of these down down in his luck billionaires who just can't seem to catch a break. Um, but he, like playing colleges used to be like a huge, not only like a huge market for comedy, but a huge money maker for comedians. Where like like all of the early like George Carlin stuff was like recorded on campus at like places where like now you know live at Berkeley <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah that kind of stuff like it used it used to be more of like a lucrative like avenue so I'm sure he's played colleges in the past but yeah I don't know yeah I feel like you don't really hear very much of that anymore like shows advertised at colleges and stuff like that yeah I don't know. So he so he's your key to the city this week. Yeah, because he uh, Cause he never said that. He never said. I never said that. Don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what are your guys key? Uh, to the I'll, I'll give Brett some time to think since I kind of got him on the spot there. Um, I'll plug a YouTube channel. I uh, got into a little bit recently, a little bit late in the boat. Uh, Contra points. Oh, oh Contra yeah. points is great. Yeah, I've watched some of her videos. I feel like, yeah, she's good at describing a lot of issues in ways that aren't just screamy and yelly. Yeah, and I like I like the presentation too, where it's like it's it's there's there's a point, but it's definitely also like comedy. You yeah. know, there there's like there's some salt with the fucking or there there's some sugar with the medicine, however you want to say it. Sugar and spice, everything nice. No, that's not You're what I'm going that's that route. Not the, okay. No. So yeah, it's uh, you know pretty funny, insightful. It's, enter- it's entertaining, it's but entertaining. there's also some background to it. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those things where like I I wish I could condense it like all of those videos into like like I, I, th- I feel like there's people who just need to watch watch her videos, you know? Yeah, just Do be like think- a little bit deprogrammed from like things that seem like normal, but actually have like uh, yeah, a whole like under. Yeah. Whole, Do you like, think Ben Shapiro watched her video deconstructing Ben Shapiro's uh, transgender views? God, I, I hope so. It's possible. Mm-hmm. He should do like a riff tracks on it. 
Okay, guys, uh, this is not actually what I said, and what you're doing is you're taking what I said out of context, and you see, that that can really be problematic, because uh, at the end of the day, it really is XY and XX. Those, you only have two options, and you can't be in between, okay? You can't just make up words, okay? Okay, okay folks? Well, don't take Brett's key to the city away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Brett, you have a key to the city. Yeah. Uh, ben Shapiro's nasal cavity. <laughs> Thanks for doing the good work of keeping him sounding hilarious. <laughs> my wife is um, a doctor, and she can't she can't fix my nasal cavity. Okay, she she took a look at it. She she took out her stethoscope. She she can't fix it. Okay, I all right. So, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll go with a YouTube channel as well. Can I can I shout out a YouTube channel? Yeah, yeah. Um, I've been. I mean, I've I've been watching Sam Cedar for like a long time, but like, I feel like lately, like his network has been like really good, and I've been watching all these back videos of him debating libertarians, and it's like, it's great. It's just fucking great. Yeah, I've I've actually I've been watching a lot of his show too, um, as of late, and um, I think especially I started paying more attention to him when um. Like after Mike Cernovich got him fired from MSNBC and stuff like that, it's like that's the first time I'd heard of him before, and I I did start watching uh, his channel, and uh, yeah, definitely. Like I think for a while, um, I was like somewhat on the Ron Paul train, you know, sort of thing, and uh, I didn't I didn't vote or anything like that. And I'm not lame, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I uh, you know I I definitely ascribe to certain viewpoints um that were sort of sympathetic to like the libertarian party Mm -hmm. and uh but his like his very pragmatic takedowns of like very simple issues that society has to deal with is like phenomenal like uh he's definitely he definitely comes across as very callous but like i don't i got a lot out of listening to uh to those debates you're talking about oh yeah yeah because because you know not only does he like take take down like these arguments he, he has callers in so it's kind of like easy bait but you know i just love watching it and shit but yeah, he definitely. um not only does he walk through like you know like kind of representing the left in a way that's it, it's not like purity you know it's, it's not like the let's yeah. see how far let's see how like pure i can be with my with, with my socialism or whatever it's it's very like he's got like a, a an encyclopedic knowledge of like the last 20 years in politics and, and like a lot of history and shit and to just to, to see it laid out in a way that's like very graspable for like anybody, you know, pretty much he's just a, you know, one of those great broadcasters who also happens to have like, you know, a good point of view and everything. It's yeah, great definitely. stuff. It's great stuff. I also want to, can I give another key, uh, a smaller key to the city? Yeah. Yeah. This is just the tiny key, like yeah. the, the bike lock key. I did a show in uh, Windsor last night, which is in Canada, just right across uh-huh. the border. And uh, during one of my friend's sets, he referred to himself as the, his name is Scott Gone, very funny comedian. All those, all the Windsor comedians are very funny, but he described himself as the, the bad boy of the wild cards of Windsor comedy. Oh yeah, I saw you put that on Twitter. I was <laughs> going to ask you about that. <laughs> I, I, I haven't stopped laughing about that since, so shout out to them. Oh yeah. The bad boys... Of the wild cards of Windsor <laughs> It's very specific. Oh, yeah, it's great. should buy him my, uh, my uh, Feel the Burn t-shirt. Maybe he'll get it. If he likes specific <laughs> things. Yeah. yeah. Um, so before we get to the final segments of the show here, Brett, where the hell can we find you on the internet? Uh, um, besides Brett, uh, Google. Oh, yeah. Besides, yeah, to- <laughs> besides Pornhub. Yeah. Go to Google and Google Pornhub and then in Pornhub <laughs> search. No, I mean, I'm on like, just follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Those are like where I'm doing the most. <laughs> What's and the like, handle on that again? It's a Brett underscore Mercer underscore. Cool. Um, Check it out as yeah. we both highly recommend it. I, I took a bunch of video. I, today I went to a Detroit Red Wings game because there was a Grateful Dead cover band playing beforehand. <laughs> and so I'll be posting uh, my dispatch from Little Caesars Arena uh, <laughs> over the next couple of days. 
I liked so, your uh, I liked your video where you uh, you were playing. I think Blackbird by the Beatles, and uh, you, like your one hand looks really big. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, what's funny is like I wasn't even yeah. I I I went on Google, my favorite website, <laughs> and I searched a uh, bad guitar playing, <laughs> and that's just what came up. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I am trying to like make more videos and like, and shit like that. So. Well, yeah, we'll follow Brett. Don't miss a beat. Tuned. All right. Well, uh, let's read one of our five star iTunes reviews. That's right. If you go ahead and leave us a five star review on iTunes, we'll read it on the show. What, what an honor. Oh, that reminds me. Can I, can I plug big time garbage again? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go go, go leave reviews because we don't get a lot of reviews and sometimes like our guest parents will listen to it and leave a one-star review because they didn't like what we said. <laughs> so it kind of brings down our number. Okay, well, we can't have that. Let's bring yeah. Brett's and the Big Time Garbage Gang's numbers way up. <laughs> get on iTunes, five-star review, say some nice things. Anyway, let's b- uh, back to you. <laughs> So iTunes five star review thought cops. What do we got? So this is this is the last. This is the most recent one that we have. Uh, so please please leave us more reviews so we can read them on the show. Uh, this is by Uberes Eight, I think, um, and it's titled "Be the Nancy." Um, it says, uh, "In a day and age of positive Paulas, sometimes you need some negative Nancys." These two boys are the Nancys we need. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Uberis. <laughs> that is great. It's very backhanded. Thank you very much. <laughs> we tell it like it is. Huh? <laughs> uh, without further ado, uh, why don't we go to some voicemails? Hey, Thought Cops. This is Matt. What's um, up, Matt? This is in reference to a caller from last week that said something about Jim Carrey on The Office and uh, how... Michael did the talking butt reference, and then he applies for an interview a couple seasons later. Yes. Um, I think it's like that movie Last Action Hero where Never saw um, the little kid tries to show Arnold Schwarzenegger that he's really a movie star, oh, okay. and yeah. he's just in a movie. And when he goes to the video store, uh, Sylvester Stallone was in all of the Terminator movies. So I don't know. I'm sure there's a name for that oh, kind of parallel yeah, I universe saw somebody... existence, but... That was my takeaway from it. Uh, you guys are great. Keep it up. Bye. Oh, thank you. That's really? really clever. I actually saw somebody coincidentally posting about this exact same thing on Twitter this week. Yeah. Saying that they had Stallone replace Schwarzenegger in the Terminator yeah. movies. Maybe, maybe that was the same guy. It wasn't. Oh, okay. Um, it, that's not like breaking the fourth wall. It's like a different... Like, it, it's it's referential, but it's not... It's not like looking in the camera and going, ah, you know, sort of. It's a little, it's a little fourth wall. It's a little fourth wall, but there's got to be another term for it. Well, uh, maybe they just broke the freaking floor. (laughs) Uh, It's it's like they went up to the fourth wall and like leaned against it all cool like that. Deadpool. Oh, oh, this? That guy does, you know. Maybe it's the, uh, it's the glory hole in the fourth wall. (laughs) (laughs) Damn, dude. (laughs) <laughs> that sounds like the the name of like a like a workshop for one man shows. <laughs> <laughs> the, the glory hole in the fourth wall. It's great. All right, we got uh, we got one more voicemail. I'm gonna do the one that's titled uh, Nico MP3. All right. Thought fuckers. Oh, hey. Hey. I don't know if you guys are aware of these chicks because you're men. But I'm aware what? of them, and they're they're fucking stupid. It's like girls who have multiple children with multiple dudes oh who do God. not use birth control complain about how birth control is poison. <laughs> you know what's also poison? Getting raw dogged by dudes with, with multiple baby mamas and kids they don't fucking care about. That's poison to the soul. I don't want to hear your fucking health advice when you're too fucking stupid to use a condom, pull out, or get an abortion. You know, we can do that. You know, abortion is a thing. If you need help funding one, I'll pay it because you're fucking stupid and you need to not project your stupidity onto other people. Now, keep Roe v. Wade a thing, please. I wish I was aborted too. (laughs) (laughs) Now, Brett, earlier you asked if the two minutes of hate had to be internet related. Um, Nobody really cares, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, Nico did uh, in the chat here make an addendum and said these are also the same people who moved to Colorado. Fuck those people. <laughs> so uh, let's not let's not make Colorado secede. Let's oh, let's post birth abort everyone in Colorado. <laughs> Passion voicemail as always. Thank you. Uh, you can leave your own at 312-788-7361 or you can always send us an audio file at thoughtcopspodcast at gmail.com. Brett, thanks so much for doing the show again. We love yeah, to have again. you. Uh, you get Hell that yeah. gumshoe status and we didn't mention that earlier, but whatever. Uh, Brett, you're always a delight to have on the show. Hey, it's it's. I, I love coming on, love talking to the, to, to the cops themselves. Love reaching out to Cop Nation. <laughs> uh, thanks yeah. for having me. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, for sure, man. And, yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, th- Grant, thanks for being my friend. Thank <laughs> you for being a friend. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And I hope that you have a great week. And it brings yeah, you many, many riches, like a thousand bucks. <laughs> <laughs>